no joke and it has dominated the news all week. Now, I've been against Gaddafi all along and I've said so publicly here and elsewhere many times. But I was against the NATO bombardment of Libya. I was against my own country, which can't even pay its bills, expending 31 million pounds a week, killing Libyans. What started supposedly as a defensive measure to protect citizens and demonstrators in Benghazi turned out to be a massive and sustained attack by NATO aircraft to unseat Gaddafi. 20,000 air missions were flown. Countless bombs were dropped. Unquantifiable costs, financial and in human lives, were incurred. And we may just be at the beginning. Joining me now from New York is the best investigative journalist in the United States of America and commentator too, Russ Baker. Russ, welcome once more to The Real Deal. Thanks, George. Great to be here. Now, Russ, your forces uh, stayed out of all this uh, wisely, although most of the weaponry carries, of course, the ubiquitous stars and stripes. The Libyan regime carried out an extraordinary clandestine lobbying operation, it turns out, in the US, trying to persuade the Democratic Party and the president to oppose the NATO action. Now, how has it all gone down? How has it been playing out in the American media? Well, uh, speaking for myself, I, like you, had my problems with Gaddafi. And when I first heard about an uprising, I was excited about it. Uh, and I understood the notion uh, of a, a humanitarian intervention in case there was a slaughter. But as time passed, I began thinking about this and digging in. And on our website, whowhatwhy.com, now for several months, we've been publishing pieces, scrutinizing very carefully what's going on there. Here are some thoughts. Uh, basically, uh, the initial claim that NATO was going in there to protect Libyans seems to be untrue. Uh, that has never, or I should say very rarely, been an actual reason uh, for Western military intervention. And I don't think it was the case there. Um, I began trying to figure out what was the case, and it occurred to me at some point that uh, the Arab Spring was essentially a threat uh, to NATO. Uh, and the beautiful thing about Libya is that what's going on there is essentially NATO's own Arab Spring. They are in the driver's seat in a country right next to Egypt, which has just had all of that tumult. It's a country that has uh, tremendous amounts of oil, and particularly a, a grade of oil, which is highly prized, a sweet crude. Uh, and then, of course, you have many, many other agendas of Britain, Italy, and France in terms of Libya being a key actor uh, with immigration patterns, uh, uh, the finances in Africa, and much, much more. So I think there's a, there's a great deal more going on there that we're not hearing about in the corporate media. Absolutely true. Now, uh, the American politicians uh, probably kept their heads down. Has the media in the United States been as gung-ho as the media over here in Britain? It's been absolutely disgraceful, George, as bad as it was with Iraq or any of these other things. Uh, it's almost as if we can never learn a lesson. Mm. Uh, and I think this is really what is fundamentally uh, unreformable about the media in this country. It's why I started whowhatwhy.com, which, as you know, is a nonprofit. We don't take uh, corporate money. We don't take advertising. Uh, our, our contention is that it basically... Uh, uh, it becomes impossible for the media to actually investigate these things. They've got to just take things at face value. But all you've got to do is look, look at the stories that came out. Very early on, they started putting out these stories that cast Gaddafi in a terrible light. For example, claiming that uh, he was encouraging his troops to commit mass rape. Uh, supplying them with Viagra and even more ridiculously with condoms. Uh, and as you know on whowhatwhy.com, we started looking at that early on. We said it didn't make any sense. There was no evidence of that. But it was very, very powerful. And newspapers and electronic media in the United States and Britain and throughout the world just lapped that story right up. They then started coming out with new stuff claiming that Gaddafi had personally ordered the, the Lockerbie bombing. The man who said that he had the evidence, a, a former minister of Gaddafi's, said he would be producing it imminently. He never did. The press never followed up on any of that. There was also a, a race uh, issue. Um, I don't know how well known in the United States this is, but there's ample evidence of the lynching, the literally the lynching of black Libyans and indeed some black migrant workers in Libya by these uh, so-called rebels on the principle that if they're black, 
well, they might well be mercenaries that Gaddafi has hired from one African country or another. Well, that's right. And, of course, that's a, a remarkable irony uh, since uh, Obama is getting essentially favorable press on this uh, first African-American president. That issue should be front and center because these are Libyan citizens uh, and it is a case of uh, extreme racism and terror against their own people. That story should be covered. Now, another uh, flicker uh, was only a flicker in the uh, Pentagon's uh, 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 purview was that there was a flicker of al-Qaeda about the uh, Libyan rebels. Uh, it could well be that we've given all these guns and uh, given all these billions now and become the Air Force for the same sort of chaps that we helped into power in Afghanistan. Uh, well, that's right. And in fact, what's very interesting are the indications uh, of both NATO knowing that these elements are uh, significant in the rebel forces, that Gaddafi actually was very much a friend of the West, particularly in recent years, in holding the line against that kind of, uh, of fundamentalism. Uh, and also, uh, very interesting, for example, uh, General Hifter, uh, who was brought in to try to uh, solidify these forces, uh, as we report on whowhatwhy.com, that he had previously spent 20 years living in the United States, just down the road from CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia, with no uh, visible means uh, of, of income throughout those years. So they'd been in there very, very early, just as they were in on the ground in creating al-Qaeda uh, uh, back in the, in the 80s. Now, I'm a regular reader, thanks to you sending me the uh, links of your website. I must say, and I described you at the beginning, and I'm not exaggerating, you are the best investigative journalist now working in America, although that's not quite the compliment it once would have been, because uh, there are not that many, but you're by far the best. Tell us how people can follow you on that website. Uh, well, it's who, what, why, dot com. Uh, we're also on Twitter, who, what, why, uh, and we are working very, very hard to build our team. Um, as you'll see, my byline is on a lot of stories. Working, we're working hard to expand our team, get more people working on stories. We want to be, uh, we want uh, Britain and we want the world very much to be part of our audience. We'd love to hear story ideas from you. You can contact us via the site. If you like what we're doing, you can go to whowhatwhy.com and click on uh, the donate button at the top right uh, and become part of making our work possible. Now, I'll tell you what, I can't have a man like you on the show without asking you this. Many people in Britain are absolutely fixated on the battle going on uh, amongst the seven dwarves or eight dwarves on the Republican right 